Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, we are covering tooltips. Everything you need to know about tooltips is going to be in this video. This is gonna be a two-part video because when we get to Viz and tooltips, I'll show you what that is on screen now, we need a little bit more time. So in this video, I'll cover the basics of tooltips, how to set them up, how to format them, how to put a visualization inside of a tooltip, how to use actions, and how to use some of the quirkier sides of tooltips. And then in the next video, we'll dive deeper into Viz and tooltips. So as I always say, Let's get stuck in. Okay, so I'm gonna start here in Tableau. I'm just doing a standard uh, Tableau workbook here. I'm not gonna do any sort of bespoke thing with custom data. People always throw shade on me for using Superstore and not using real data. But the reality is, is that unless I'm using your data, I'm never gonna sort of meet that requirement. So I use Superstore and I use the sample workbooks because that's what everyone has. They're easy to get hold of. And if you don't have them, I'll put a link in the description below. And I know there's no problem sharing that data and that workbook. So let's get stuck in. Let's go ahead and hit Superstore uh, over here. I'm actually just gonna use the sample workbook, this sample workbook that was in that corner before everything loaded. That's what I'm gonna use today. And as soon as we open it, you can see mine at least fires up really, really quickly and we're good to go. Let's go ahead and shut the show me bar. I never, I had this open to take a picture for a thumbnail that I did some time ago and uh, I haven't shut it since. So I'm gonna close show me. We don't use show me on this channel because I show you how to do everything for yourself without any assistance from that tool. So in this video, what I want to do is really get to grips with what tooltips are. You can see that I'm over hovering over France, Alsace, Champagne, Ardon, Lorraine. My French is awful, but this tooltip looks interesting and I'm gonna show you how to build it. If I go over here to this uh, particular part of the chart, you can see there's another tooltip. It's been formatted a little bit. If I go to another tab, let's go to the product tab and look at another uh, tooltip. If I go over on, on this dot, you'll see that when I click on it, I actually get something that pops up out of the tooltip. This is known as the command strip. And we also have these little links. And I don't know how many of you know that these are actually clickable links. And when you click them, they do things. They highlight other things. So in this video, I'm gonna break all of this down. But to get to the very basics, well, let's start right from the beginning and let's just create our own chart so I can show you how tooltips work. So with tooltips, you kind of get them for free. Let me just create a very simple visualization. I'm gonna build a scatter plot so you can see how this is done. This is super simple. I'm gonna bring two measures. I'm gonna bring sales onto rows and profit onto columns. And that's my visualization done. Columns and rows, profit and sales, and we have one data point on our scatter point. Now, the reason we only have one data point is because we've got nothing else in the visualization explaining to Tableau the level of detail that we'd like to look at. So everything gets aggregated into one data point because that one data point is essentially the sum of all of these um, values put together. So when I hover over it, you can see that it says profit 372,000, sales 2,938,000. So this is a tooltip and it works really nicely. When I hover over it without clicking on it, without doing anything, I get this nice simple one. When I click on it, I get a command tab that opens up. So that command tab isn't that populated because we don't have many bits of information on our particular visualization. We just have the two green items over here on the left-hand side. In order to make this command bar do a little bit more, we need to give it some sort of dimension that it can then run as a filter or as a command or as an action. Essentially, we need to break our data down into components that it can then do something with. So let me show you how that works then. So let's grab segment and I'm just gonna put that on color. So essentially when I do this, when I drop it on color, what you'll see is I get three dots now because I have one color for each segment. That's denoted by the legend over here on the right hand side. So for each one of these, I have consumer, corporate, home office, and they're appropriately colored. Well, now when I click on the chart and I hover over these, you'll see that I now get the additional text, consumer, profit and sales. And as I hover over this, I get the contextual information for each data point. That's a free tooltip. I didn't create that. Tableau did that for me automatically. Now, if you wanna add a measure that you don't want displayed in your visualization, let's say I'd like to add the quantity of sales for each of these, but I don't wanna display that in the scatter plot. I don't want the number anywhere on screen. I just want it in my tooltip. All you need to do is go ahead to the pane and then drag whatever you want. So in this case, it's quantity. And you'll see that in the marks pane, there's this tooltip option. I can actually just hover over it at the moment. I won't let go just yet. When I hover over it, you see it goes a really slight gray. And when I drop this quantity value onto it, you'll see that I get this uh, sort of speech bubble next to the quantity icon to say, hey, you've put this on the tooltip. And so what will happen is that quantity will appear in my tooltip. Let's go ahead, click on this this time, and you'll see that it appears there. Corporate has a quantity of 11,635. 
Again, if I hover over it without doing anything, you'll just get um, Tableau's being buggy here, so it's kind of not wanting to work. So if I just hover over it, Oh, of course, when you do a recording, a demo, and you know these things st stop behaving like they should be. This should be creating a nice responsive tooltip, but it's not. We'll fix this in a second. I'll show you how to sort of break that out of its habit. Okay, so everything is set up as we want. We've got this sort of nice setup here. When I click on something, I can see that it's all there. Now, you might notice that you've got this very subtle underlining here just underneath corporate, and that is because these are also clickable elements. Let's go ahead and add another separator. I'm going to go ahead ahead and this time maybe grab the delivery mode and I'm going to put that on detail. By doing that, what I'm essentially telling Tableau is that even though I'm displaying the segment and uh, I'm showing the profit and sales for those things, I'd like you to break each of those segments down by delivery mode. Every time I add something blue to the visualization, I'm essentially breaking the visualization down to another level of detail. So let's go ahead and grab delivery mode and put it on detail, as I said, and you'll see that we get several uh, dots for each color because essentially if I click on this one here you can see that consumer has several dots and I can actually show you these dots by now clicking on this link and you'll see that that link is actually responsible for highlighting other elements of the same dimension so when I clicked on consumer there you can see that it highlighted the three other parts of consumer and I can hover over those that's working again nicely you can see that that works absolutely fine so that is the sort of fundamentals of tooltips. It's a bare basic. If you do nothing, if you don't even go into the tooltip menu, that's how tooltips work. They pretty much give you the ability to add various bits of information into the tooltip that doesn't affect your visualization. It's essentially additional context. If I wanted to, I could also, for example, add the discount to my tooltip. I could add the count of orders as per the order ID or the rows. It's actually the, it's actually the count of rows in the orders table, not the count of orders. That's a classic mistake. Here, I can actually grab the order ID, put it on detail by doing that, and obviously you'll get tons of dots. That's not what we want. What we want to do is actually count the number of orders. So let's go ahead, go to measure, select count distinct, and then those dots will disappear because those are now measures. And now that count, if I actually this time click on these three dots, I can actually change what part of the marks pane it's going onto just by selecting it and selecting tooltip. And now if I go and hover over this, you'll see all those metrics I added are inside the tooltip. So everything is now there. I can see the quantity, I can see the sales, the profit, the discount. Now the discount has been aggregated. This is not a good way to do the discount. What you could do is you could do an average discount, but what you should really do with discounts is you should aggregate them at the highest level that you're calculating them. It doesn't make sense to grab all the percentages and add them up, nor does it make sense to do an average discount that sort of doesn't really apply because um, depending on the size of the order the discount might have a slightly different effect so in some cases you also have to pay attention to the aggregation that's going on as you put things in for example if i don't want this discount to be a sum let's say for argument's sake we're happy with the averages let's go to average now when i hover over that you can see that the discount now says 10 percent so these are things you have to pay attention to just because you've put something into the tooltip doesn't mean it's doing the right thing. So you can change all of those by just going to any of these items uh, that has this sort of tooltip icon on it, click the arrow next to it, and then change whatever you need to change. Maybe it's the aggregation, maybe you need to change the way it behaves. These are all features that sort of do slightly different things. Won't go into that into this video. I've done some videos on this, so check those out. Things like the attribute, I've done a video on the attribute function itself as well. Just sound it's sort of different, but kind of the same. But nonetheless, that's the basics. Now let's take this upper level. Let's actually start using the tooltip more effectively because no one ever really stays with the default tooltip. The default tooltip is actually not well designed. It kind of carries redundant information. For example, um, I, you know, it makes sense for me to have profit and sales in there, but I don't need to necessarily have segment then corporate and then delivery mode in standard class because in your business context, you might already know what those are. So maybe you're analyzing posts, maybe you're analyzing delivery supplies, so you don't need to say the obvious things inside of these tooltips. So how do you change this? Well, you head to the tooltip pane over here and just open that up. And when we do that, we get this interface. Now I'm gonna take a bit of time now just sort of breaking down the anatomy of this tooltip area. So let's go ahead and grab my square, 
highlighter and we'll highlight this top row. This is like the formatting pane. It mostly has formatting tools in here. The only exception to this is actually this. Um, this option here is actually not a formatting capability. It's the ability to add more context to your tooltip. The same way we were adding things by dragging them onto the tooltip pane, you can also do that here as long as those items are already in the visualization. So I'll break that down when I get to it a little later on. But nonetheless, this is how this works. You've got font, uh, you've got the size, you've got bold, italics, underline, you've got the color, and you can obviously go and choose more colors if you want. You've got the text alignment. And last but not least, if you make any sort of change to all of this, let's say that I did make these absolutely bold and I thought, oh, that's awful. Um, I can actually go to this item over here that I'm highlighting in blue. I can click on that and that will actually clear the formatting and return me to the default state that I was at. Really handy feature to know about and it's sort of good to be aware of. I'm gonna skip this middle bit uh, for one second. I just wanna to go to this section here because here you have three options. One that says show tooltips, include command buttons, allow selection by category, and then in the show tooltips option, we've got two options, on hover and responsive. What do these do? Well, let me show you. If I go back, I'll leave everything as selected. When I hover over this, you'll see that I get an immediate tooltip. That, that tooltip doesn't need me to click on anything. When I, As soon as I hover over something, it turns up straight away. That's called a responsive tooltip. However, if I click on it, you see that I get a command button. This command button sort of comes up and it's got a bunch of information on there. I'll go through that in a second. This is called a typical tooltip. It's like an on hover tooltip, okay? So if I go to tooltip here, you'll see that I have the two options, responsive and on hover, and those are essentially those two options. If I select on hover and I click okay, when I hover over it, it takes a little longer. It's a fraction longer. I'll try and put these side by side so you can see what happens. So for the purpose of that, let me just hover over this one again. And to the right of it, I'll put an exact replica of the exact same thing happened with responsive. And you can see how that sort of works. So now you can see the difference between those two. It's much, much clearer the difference. And so we can go back to the tooltip and carry on going through this. Now, something I skipped was this little ruler up here. This is sort of the most random thing and not many people actually know what this does. Most people think it's actually here to kind of give you some context of spacing, to kind of give you an idea of how to measure these things. I've even seen some people grab a ruler and put it on screen and say, aha, you see it's a ruler. This is what it's supposed to be used for. And Tableau put it there so you can measure things. And the way most people actually try and measure things in this tool is by actually doing this. They sort of hit the space bar furiously and they don't understand like what's going on here? Why did this spacing not move? I'm, I'm, I'm smashing the space bar. Look, and look, it just jumped a whole bunch. Why did it do that? And so this is actually to do with the way this tab and spacing works in here and how that ruler relates to those things. So let me just go back to the beginning and let's reset this and let me actually show you how this works, okay? So the first thing I want to do is highlight to you that this little ruler, when I move it around, you can see that it has an effect on the underlying content. I didn't change anything. I just moved this across and you can see that it's moving the sales text below. And that's essentially because my cursor is actually on that line. So you can see here the cursor is on this row and that's why this is affecting it. And it has a net effect of essentially moving the text just where it says sum of sales across. And so if I move it back, I can actually try and figure out, well, what is actually in that space? If I actually just hit the back arrow, you can see that it's it's like a tabbed space in between those two. So what if I delete that? What will that uh, do now? If I put the cursor back at the end like it was, you'll see that it does nothing, okay? So this slider has an effect on any tabbed items. And because my cursor is on the bottom row, it's not actually moving anything because of of course, I haven't selected anything. To show you this in, in sort of earnest, let me highlight everything. So let's highlight everything again, move this across, and now you can see that it's just magically aligned all my values to the right-hand side. And that's because there was a tabbed element between all of those. So all of these are now aligned perfectly to this particular thing, okay? And if I was to go and put a tab inside of here now, because I'd actually selected that bottom row when I made that change, that will also line up with everything over here on the right hand side. So this is super useful for uh, making sure things are neatly aligned and things are equally spaced, especially when you have really long dimensions, things that take up a lot of space to explain. You wanna make sure that you account for the longest value. This is a nice way of doing that and making sure things don't clash. 
Now, another use case for this, if I just sort of go back, highlight everything, bring it all back to the beginning and get everything back. Um, if I go back and let's do this, let's just uh, take these two lines here at the top. Let's delete those tabs and I'll create a little bit of space. So we'll leave the bottom one as is and we'll do something with this top one. What I'll do is on this top one, I'll move the segment up and I'll just do uh, a couple of spaces. And for the discount, I'll go again, move that and do that a couple of spaces. OK, and now if I just highlight these two, you can see that when I move this, something does change it. Delivery mode did have a tab, so I can go back, go ahead and delete that tab. We don't want any tabs in here whatsoever. Just highlight that, move that across. Now it's not changing anything. I know there's no tabs in that row. So I'll go back to the beginning and this time I'm going to add a tab just before where it says segment and just before where it says discount. And now that I've done that, it's moved things, okay? And now I can grab this and I can move my little cursor and make sure that everything starts here at the number three. And now all my elements start in a consistent place. Now, the reason segment isn't quite in the same place is because there's one space character just in front of it. And so now by deleting that, things are perfectly lined up. I can actually highlight this again and move it a little bit closer just to get that you know alignment just right. Hit OK. And now when I hover over these, you see you get that really nice alignment. Uh, the segment and the discount start on the same position and then the values uh, that kind of come to them are sort of over on the right hand side. And so what you can actually do is you can actually format this to make it a lot easier to read. So one thing I sometimes do is I make the actual variable a little bit bold. Um, I'm just doing some very basic formatting here. You don't have to do it exactly as I'm doing it. It's totally up to you. But if I go ahead and hit uh, bold on all of those and now I go back to the tooltip, it's much easier to see the relevant values. OK, so we can go really deep on this formatting, actually, and sort of take it to the next level. If we go back to tooltip, you probably want to make sure that, you know, all the you know numerical values or the profit and sales are together. So I'll grab the quantity here. I'll put that on a new line underneath. There's some sort of logic. What you want to do is kind of put information that should be together together. And you also want to uh, get rid of some of this sort of tableau speak. This says discount count, distinct count of order ID. That's just the number of orders. So you can just go um, number, you, you know, you can use even the, the hashtag here, number of orders. You don't have to be so verbose about it. So you can say, here, here's a number of orders. Here's a profit. Here's the sales. And by the way, these all relate to this particular region. And just to give you know some sense of hierarchy, you can give that top text a little bit bigger font and you can give this one here. I'll give this one just a little bit smaller. I'll go back to 10. That was already 10. Hit OK. And now when I look at this, there is a, some sense of order. Now it's not beautiful. I know this is not the best formatted tooltip ever, but nonetheless, it has a sense of hierarchy. You've made the important things easier to read and you've put other like information uh, below. Now, the last thing to do is always make it easy for people to read values. So um, you can do this again, just a simple way like I did. You don't have to do any particular formatting. We could be here for ages. This is all really a matter of style. What I'll say to you, though, is whatever you do, be consistent. If you use a font, use the font throughout the entire tooltip. If you use a font size, be consistent in how you use the size. I've used the large one at the top and the small one at the bottom, again, to communicate hierarchy. So there we go. That's, uh, that's as good as I want to do. I don't want to spend more time making it beautiful and colorful and all that jazz, we need to get onto some other topics. So that's the basics of formatting a tooltip. Um, look out on what people do on Tableau Public, go and see some different styles. People sort of really do take this to the next level. And what I always recommend doing is if you're going to work with the same data set, there's nothing wrong with copying all of this copying the text and pasting it somewhere so you can then come back and paste it back in should anything happen, right? I sometimes do that if I know I'm going to be adding the same tooltip across the same data source but in different places so everything is nice and consistent. That's some you know really quick uh, hack that you can sort of save. So that's uh, the formatting. Now, the remaining options, we've got the command buttons here at the bottom and allow selection by category, okay? So let's look at these two. We have to go back to the tooltip to see this. So if I go back, when I click on this, you'll see that I get the command icon here. And the command icon is essentially uh, like another piece of functionality in Tableau. Essentially, these two options here operate as filters. They essentially have the same effect as what would happen if you added or removed things from the filter pane. So when I click on one of these two, something will happen and it will result in an action being put into the filter pane. So let's go ahead and let's say we keep only this particular segment, this particular data point here. When we do that, you'll see all the data disappears and 
it puts a filter here and it applies it as an action. So this is what I was saying would happen. These two little links are essentially saying, look, I've created a little set, a little group of stuff, and I've made an action and I've put it all there. And that's essentially what's going on. If I was to click on this and edit the filter, you'd see exactly what's going on. And the filter is essentially this sort of inclusion and it's got a bunch of information and it's basically based on the combination of various factors that were on that data point. So you can see it says here standard class and corporate made that data point. So that's what the filters sort of been built and the filter that was built automatically combines delivery mode and the segment together. And that's essentially what's happening there. Now, if we click OK and we go ahead and remove Remove that filter, you get the visualization that we had before. Now, if I click on this data point and this time I hit exclude, exactly the same thing happened, but this time it's an exclusion filter. So the previous one was an inclusion filter and the this one is an exclusion filter. Again, it's exactly the same. If you go to the filter, you see you have this little option here to exclude. When you take and untick that, that switches it between inclusion and exclusion. So that's all that that's doing. And it's basically just another way of basically doing the same thing. But I'll go ahead and remove that filter and we'll get back to sort of the starting point here. Now we've got a couple of things in the command bar that we haven't touched on yet. Let me click on this so it stays up. You've got the ability to group things. So the grouping is a very uh, sort of good capability in Tableau because you can do something called visual grouping. Let me show you what that is. So if I, let's say, highlight these two items and I'd let's say, look, you know what? I wanna analyze these two things. Let me make a group out of them. So I'll just hover over one of these. I'll go into this little paper clip and I can actually add all the dimensions or I can just group one particular aspect of the data point. So in this case, I can just group the delivery modes, I can group the segment, but I'll say all dimensions and you'll see that something happened. Not only did it group them, my visualization didn't change, but these two have a color blue, whereas these are gray and they're gray because in that one move, Tableau also created something called a set and the set is essentially what we can see here. And then having done that, it moved that set onto the color pane. So you can see here that this color pane has actually changed and it moved the delivery mode onto detail. So if I actually just create a little bit of space here, you'll see that the group uh, is actually here. I said a set, I meant group in this particular case. So it's actually created a group and that group is also here. And then that group becomes a dimension that we can actually look at over here. So there's a whole world of things that happen very quickly in that one click. It created a bunch of things for us. It changed the color It moved out to the color pane and then it created that group. So if I want to change that group now, I don't have to do it in the visualization. I can actually just go over here and edit this group. And once I click on that, you'll see that I get the two items that were grouped together and then all the other items are grouped into another group over here. Okay, and this is all happening inside of a tooltip. Okay, so this is a really powerful capability. What I'll do is I'll go back uh, a couple of steps. Oh, I went back too many steps there. Let's go back um, forward one more. And now I'm gonna do a slightly different group. I'm gonna select these four here and I'm gonna click on that. I'm actually going to hover. You don't even have to click. You can just say, hey, group all the dimensions, please. And then it does the same thing again. And again, we've got the group. Let's go look at our group, edit the group. And there we go. We've got four things now and everything else is in this other group. So that's essentially how that works. That's all that is doing. So if you ever want to group things visually, that's the way to do it. You don't need to do it that way. You could create your own groups elsewhere. You select two items to create a combined fill, then go ahead and do whatever you need to do with that. And you can create groups. That's definitely another video. We need to push on with tooltips. The last couple of things I'll cover in the command pane, you'll notice that when I actually hover over this, I didn't get one feature. And as soon as I click, one feature pops in and this is called the light bulb. The light bulb is essentially a feature called explain data. Explain data is a relatively new feature. I've done lots of videos of this, so I won't break out and sort of do a deep dive into this now, but essentially what it tries to do is it looks at the data point and tries to find things that aren't normal about this data point, anything that's sort of quirky. So with this particular data point, it's actually found quite a lot of interesting things, slightly higher than expected number of orders, a uh, slightly lower than expected discount, a uh, slightly higher than expected uh, count of orders again, uh, profit, quantity, sales, this is all very sort of uh, diagnostic information. It's just basically trying to tell you these are the things that don't look like the rest of the data. And that's why these two are, you know, could be considered as outliers because they are very much 
you know, to the top right. They're very different to the rest of the data. And if you want to, you can click on any one of these and see a full explanation. So you can see here, you can see the relevant dimensions, relevant measures, and it, that it's taken into account to look at this analysis. And if I go to this one, you can see that for the discount, it's looking at uh, this particular relevant single value. And it's trying to break these things down. So this is all sort of very useful information that you can use now. In some cases, what you might see is when you expand on some of these, you get a little chart. So it starts off grouped and then you can expand on each and every one of these. And if you want to, you can pop these out as individual charts. So if you like the analysis that Tableau's done and you want to cheat, you can pop them out and it actually builds the exact same chart for you um, over here. So if you want to get away with doing analysis, use explain data, just you know pop all these charts out. And you can even steal ideas. You can use these as ideas for how you do your visualization. But it will always try and show you in a visual format these differences, and you can kind of export these differences and play around with them. Again, we're still talking about the power of what's inside of a tooltip. So this is just monumental. Check out my videos on this in previous versions of uh, Tableau that I've already done. So just search explain data Tableau Tim and you'll find a bunch of great uh, videos. Hopefully you find them great um, that you can talk about, okay? So the command button is pretty much there. We've got these last two items. We've got the ability to create a set. This is the sort of two interlinking items here. And then you've got the ability to preview data. So uh, the difference between a set and a group is definitely not one for this video. Um, I'll definitely do a separate video on that named exactly that, the difference between set and groups. But if I was to create a set, you can see that it actually gives me an interface and the set is essentially a way of grouping data. It's a slightly different way of grouping data and it actually does exactly the same thing as groups. It takes these two, it puts them over here. And what I can do is I can put those two on color and I get exactly the same sort of coloring as I got before. So those two actually end up being out here, but because I've disrupted the level of detail, it's changed ever so slightly. So that is what that is doing. But nonetheless, these are all standard things you can do inside of the tooltip. The last one is the previewing of the data and the delivery mode segment. Uh, you've got the orders, you can see the other table as well. So the summary is essentially what the data point has and the orders table is essentially where the data is coming from. It's like the row level data behind this. Now, I can't tell you how many times when you give Tableau to people and they discover this one feature where they click on one data point, they go to this button and then you tell them that that data point, all of these rows drive that data point. You can see their eyes light up because they're like, Excel. And so what they do is they actually export this and they start using this instead of actually using Tableau. And then this becomes the sort of biggest USP or value point for Tableau. The fact that they can get to the exact rows that represent the exact thing they're looking at really, really quickly. And then you start to sort of get these requests, which is like, can you, can you build a chart with this and this? And they're like, can it just be a scatter plot? Can it just have these two dimensions together? Because what they're trying to do is find a quick hacky way of getting at the raw data. So sometimes you'll see this has been disabled exactly for that reason, but nonetheless, it's all there inside of the tooltip, okay? So that's the basics of a tooltip. We've done the basic things. Now let me start to show you the exciting things. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna build a map because maps are fun and easy to look at on the screen. So I'll just double click on the city. We'll get a map in Europe because I'm in Europe. So the Superstore version is using the European version. But in your case, it might use the American version. Absolutely fine. I'll drag sales onto size and I'll drag profit onto color. So the size of the circle represents the amount of sales, essentially the total value of the sales. And then the color denotes whether it's profitable or not. So we have a pretty nice visualization. And so what I can see here is there are obviously some unprofitable places, cities uh, around the world selling products. And what I'd like to know is, look, what are the least profitable products in those particular store? Maybe I can get a top 10 list of things that I can, you know, go tell the stores to stop selling so we don't lose money. Because essentially every time they sell those things, we are giving away money. So in order to do that, what I really need to do is to think of a chart that will help me do that. So let's go build that chart first, then we'll come back to that visualization. So the first thing I'll do is I'll grab my profit figure and I'll just go grab the products from the product hierarchy and I'll just grab the product name. And if I put this in, put it on columns, you'll see that I built the chart the wrong way around. It's a little sort of faux pas of mine. I always do this. I can just click on this sort of switch and this will switch the order of the chart. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll sort this from largest to smallest just to make sure this is working. Okay, Hover Stove Red is our most profitable product across the whole data set. Flip that around and now it's doing that in, in the inverse way. I could have also used these two options here at the top, but I just use the ones on the axis because that's you know just a habitual thing. And this is all I really need because 
Now if I go back, what I want is when I hover over this data point, I want it to use that chart to show me the context and show me the least profitable items in this particular city. So to do that, uh, there's a really easy way to do this. We just need to go back to the tooltip pane and you'll see that there's this insert option. I deliberately didn't cover this before because this is where we're gonna cover it. And the first option when you do that insert is sheets. And you'll see a list of all the sheets that you've previously used. Now that's disappeared because I just wanna show you where those sheets are. So if you look at the bottom here, these are the sheets that it's referring to. Not dashboards, specifically sheets, okay? So if I go in here, you look at sheets, you can see you've got different sheets. And these sheets, some of them are, there's multiple inside of a dashboard, but you can see the one we just created is called Sheet 20. I should really name my sheets. I know this is bad, but I haven't named it yet. Get used to it. For the record, the worst case scenario I've ever been is opening sheet number 232. That's actually happened to me inside of a you know production workbook. That's just how life is sometimes. But anyway, let's hit Sheet 20. And you'll see that it adds this text. And that's because I didn't really tell the cursor, look, I want it to be added to the bottom. So let's go ahead and undo that. Let's just hit Command Z. It didn't, didn't undo it. I know pretty much why that didn't happen. So let's go back. Let's not tempt fate here. Let's go to the bottom because this is where you really should put this. Go to Insert. Let's select Sheets. Go to Sheet 20. And now that's there. Now, before we escape from this, I just want to highlight to you, this text represents the visualization that goes in my tooltip. If you want to, you can preview it just by going here and you see you get an example of that tooltip. You can see the city at the top and you get a preview of the visualization just below. Now, this visualization is fairly large. It's actually not fitting inside of this little gap. And for the record, the preview runs off the first row of data. Okay, so you can see the cities Aachen, uh, this is country region Austria, state province Abruzzi. This is the very first record in our entire data set, at least the level of detail that we're looking at. So what we can do is we can actually change some of these dimensions. You'll see that if I look really closely at this text again, I'll make it larger on screen so you can see this, you get some variables. So you've got the sheet name, sheet 20. So technically I could even type a different number into this. I could type the name of the sheet myself and this will change what goes into the tooltip, okay? The maximum width is 300, so that's the width that this is going to take up inside of the tooltip. The maximum height is 300, so this is more like a square, like an Instagram image. And then you'll see the filter item is all fields. Now, this is interesting because if we can change this, then we can also change the way this interacts with what we're hovering over. But for now, we'll leave it as all fields. I'll go in, hit OK. And now if I hover over these data points, you'll see that I have a visualization. And every time I hover over something, it's telling me the least profitable items in those places. And so if I go to this city here, the red uh, city, Hanover in Germany, uh, very unprofitable. In fact, they gave away, uh, well, £10,440 um, in this particular case. And the product that did the most damage here was the Bevis conference table, the Apple smartphone, Nokia smartphone, uh, the Chromecast coffee table, and Hamilton beach stove. Um, I, can't, I can't see what the end of that is. But anyway, it's the classic 2080 scenario where you know 20% of the orders are causing 80% of the problem. So if I just go in and sort out these sort of top uh, 10 items, then I will pretty much gut out most of the unprofitability in the stores. And I might even start selling something more profitable because I've got the shop floor space to do that. So this is how this works. So it's very interesting and it's very cool. Now, if we go back to that tooltip options, you'll notice that we do have the ability to change these variables. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna highlight all fields and I'm just gonna move this across so we can sort of have some context of the UK. Now, in order to explain this, I'm gonna use squares and circles, okay? Because at the moment, what this tooltip is doing is when I hover over it, so this is the data point I hover over as an example, it's showing me all the relevant items that belong to that data point. So in this case, this is London, okay? What I want it to do is to actually, when I hover over London, I want it to show me the tooltip visualization for everything in England, but not Scotland and not Wales. So that's essentially like me saying, hey, I know this data point relates to London, but what I actually want you to show me is uh, all the information for England. So I'll just draw a border here. It's a very crude border over there. All the information for Wales as a separate thing, all the information for Scotland as something else, and all the information for Ni uh, Northern Ireland as something else, okay? That is a very sort of simple sort of example. So let's go ahead and let's change this all field 
and insert what I think is going to help us do that. And that's actually the state and province. Okay, so we've got country, state, province, and city. So if I go ahead and insert state, province, then you'll see that we've actually changed this parameter here to the different standard. The previously it just said all fields, now it's state and province. Click OK. And now if I go back and I hover over uh, London, you'll see that you see the values, Canon fax machine color. When I hover over the next place, it's still the same, which means it's not changing because we're still in England. However, if I go to Wales, we'll see a different product. So now it's only changing the tooltip, the visualization, if we go to a different region. And so you can actually give this chart a name. You can actually say, look, least profitable items in this region, least profitable items in this city. You can change all of that depending on how you're sort of uh, using this. And again, it says the view is too large here in my tooltip because of course the list is probably a lot longer than what I have space to show. Remember it's set to 300 pixels tall and 300 pixels wide. So that is a very, very, very brief introduction to Viz and Tooltips. It's actually an extremely powerful feature and it gets even more advanced than this. I recommend a session. There's a session at conference, which I'll put a link to in the description. I apologies, I've forgotten the lady who did this presentation, but I found the presentation absolutely brilliant. Um, I'll put this, her name on screen now because I'll be able to go away and search it while I'm uh, not recording. And uh, yeah, go check out that conference session. It's an absolute must for anyone who wants to really get to grips with Viz and Tooltips and use them effectively and know all the tips and tricks. There's some sort of limitations that Tableau puts in. And essentially in that session, she does quite comfortably walk you how to get around most of them, if that makes sense, and how to make these things even more interactive than what I've shown you here. But in the spirit of sort of keeping this brief, let's move on. This is a vision tooltip and we're pretty much done. There's not much more to add to this. Um, this is good. Now, one of the other things we wanted to do is to talk about this bottom option here, which is allow selection by category. Now you will have seen the links that I was talking about here. And when I actually hover over, let's hover over one city and we'll just click on it. You'll see that when I hover over Berlin, Germany and Berlin, I get a little bit of underlining. And when I hover over these numbers, I don't. And that's because this selection by category is enabled. So if I click on Germany, what this actually does is it highlights everything in Germany without me leaving the tooltip. And the advantage that has is that it's also aggregating the value for me. So I can see there's 154 cities that sold products and the sum total of all their profit was 107,323. Uh, okay, and that's a really sort of nice thing to have because in the tooltip, you can just go ahead uh, I can go and highlight all the other stores in Berlin. There's only one store in Berlin, that's fine. But in Germany, there's a lot more. And I'm sure if I had a sort of, what's the word, region in here, I could also highlight those as well and it would highlight everything in Europe. So this is just a nice sort of thing to be aware about. And if you don't want to enable that because the user doesn't know how it's gonna work, so just untick that option, click OK. And now when I click on that, let's click out and go back in. Uh, here we go you'll see that now there's no underlining option coming up. And when I click on it, nothing happens essentially. So that's something to be aware of. It's a really uh, sort of handy feature as well. Okay. So that is sort of the nuts and bolts of everything inside of this tooltip pane. Hey? I've shown you how to format them. I've shown you how to do viz and tooltips. I've shown you how this little sort of weird ruler thing works. And hopefully you've got the uh, information you need to sort of go out and start using this a little bit more. Now, there is one other thing that does happen in a tooltip that I won't cover in this video, uh, aside from viz and tooltips getting more advanced. And those are actions. When you set up an action between dashboards, these essentially do appear sometimes uh, in a tooltip. To just show you an example, let me go to this customer's view. And what I will do here is I will set up an action that will send me to another tab. Let's see if there's actually one here already. There isn't. So what I'll do is I'll say, look, uh, let's go to the dashboard. Let's set up an action. Again, don't need to follow along. I'm just showing you how this is works. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of different actions in here. We'll go ahead and add an action ourselves and we'll filter, okay? And what we'll say is that when we go from this, this tab here, the customers tab, I want to send you to the product tab, okay? And I wanna do that on selection. And I'm not gonna do any sort of advanced rules. I'm just gonna leave everything as default. But when I set this to menu over here, you'll see that this actually pulls up a menu at the bottom of a tooltip. So let's go ahead and click OK and click OK to that. And when I hover over this, you see nothing happens. When I click on it, you'll see that that filter that we didn't name turns up as a link. And this is technically at the bottom of our tooltip. So when I click on this, 
it then does exactly what I asked it to do. It sends me to this dashboard with that filter pre-applied and it's like someone's come and changed this dashboard on me. So that filter's essentially been applied. And what I should do is it should set some behavior that when I click out of this, this action gets cleared and everything is, is sort of uh, going back to normal. What it actually did is it sent a filter to the dashboard and this filter is right here. You can see this here that says action custom, okay? That's essentially what the dashboard action did. It sent an instruction to this filter pane if I remove this, you'll see the visualization goes back to normal because it essentially just works like a filter. And I can actually go back to this top one as well, do the same thing. It sent the action here as well, remove that. And now that goes back to normal. Okay, so that's called a dashboard action. They live inside of a tooltip that doesn't appear in a responsive one, but it does appear in a more advanced uh tooltip once you've created it and only appears when you really, really click on it or when you have a non-advanced, um, non-responsive tooltip enabled. So we'll do that in a separate video. We'll do a video on actions and everything else separately, but I just wanted to do this video on tooltips because, um, you know, tooltips have changed a lot. A lot of the videos you'll see out there tell you about hacks that you don't no longer need to do. You just don't need to do some of that stuff anymore. We have navigations, we have much, much better sort of capabilities. We've got set actions, we've got parameter actions. These are all much better ways of doing some of the more modern things today. So if you're learning tooltips, get to the basics of a tooltip and then start doing all those hacks if you really must. Thank you for watching this super long video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you're setting up a dashboard and you just wanted to get to the basis of tooltips, hopefully you found something useful in this video. If you've enjoyed it, please hit the like, subscribe button, help the channel out, help it grow, help it reach more people. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.